Hey, it's Chris, back today with a highly requested follow-up video to the iPad Pro versus MacBook Pro video that I made back in February. That that was before iOS 11, and now things are a little bit different. And actually, if you're really trying to decide between one device or the other, you might wanna go back and rewatch that first video I did just to get your mind around the whole situation. But things have really changed with iOS 11. In fact, I'd go so far as to call it an actual game changer. So what I wanna do in this video is go through some of the points that I brought up in the old video and kind of talk about what's different and why things have changed. When the first iPad Pro came out, Apple at the time was saying that you could switch from a laptop to the iPad Pro based on a few things, like it was faster than most laptops, it had a stylus so you could take notes, and it had LTE coverage. But none of those things really push it over the edge as an actual machine that I could do work on and that hasn't really changed. Those are really non-factors for me still. But with the real file system and powerful new drag and drop features, iOS 11 on the iPad has made the iPad more than just a bigger iPhone, which is kind of what it has always been. So the type of work that I do hasn't changed a whole lot since I made that first video. I'm still a video editor that does some design and writing and has to email to communicate with people. Now professional video editing, that's still not something that you can do on an iPad, although I wish that's something that Apple would spend some time trying to figure out. But as for my other workflows, I felt like they were kind of slow and miserable on iOS 10. There was a lot of double clicking on the home button to switch between apps and copying and pasting, and it just wasn't very good. It was doable, but it wasn't good. Like honestly, without a robust drag and drop system, the split screen view was just kind of pointless. But that's all different now, and it's changed for the better. You've got the new drag and drop system, which works really great with the new dock that pops up from the bottom. And I've also found that it's really useful to have the saved split screen workspaces showing up in the control center. Now I have to admit, when I watched Apple unveil iOS 11, and they were touting all these features, I was like, that seems boring and kind of out of date, and Apple's just playing catch up. But in reality, this is actually a really big deal, and I personally can't believe how much of a difference this makes in practical workflow improvement. Now I mentioned that I do some design, and in terms of that workflow, that's actually gotten better thanks to the file system of all things for me, because now I can actually grab stuff that's on my other computer, edit it here with the Apple Pencil, and shoot it back. So that's been pretty awesome. So this is actually a big revelation for me. I'm actually able to get some real work done, like everything except for my video editing on this iPad, the same iPad that was in the other video, by the way, running iOS 11. So I think that now, thanks to iOS 11, there's a real shot, a legitimate shot, that people could use this to replace their other computers. I feel like something that needs to get pointed out is that before, when it was iOS 10, and people were saying, hey, you can replace your laptop with an iPad, the people that were doing that and were adopting it, they wanted everyone to just get used to working a different way. And it was too big of a jump. It was ridiculous. Like, most people couldn't do that. So now when somebody says, you just need to learn to do things a little bit differently, that actually means something and it actually makes sense here with iOS 11. Now up until this point, I've really just been addressing some of the points that I brought up in the last video, but there's actually some new ground to cover here as well because iOS 11 brings to the table some new cool things that MacBooks just can't do. One of the best of those new features is the instant note taking. So you can tap the pencil on the lock screen and jump right into a note. And that's exactly the kind of feature that was needed to make note taking actually useful and convenient on the iPad Pro. And I also appreciate the ability to have three apps available on the screen at once, two as a split screen view, and then one that floats over that you can dismiss or bring back whenever you want. That really helps in terms of not having to dig around in a bunch of different apps for some information and then dig around again to get back where you needed it. In fact, you don't even have to see your home screen much at all if you don't want to. I'm also really loving how the iPad finally has 3D touch-like functionality. Now it's fake 3D touch, it's done with a long press rather than a deep press, and that's something that you kind of see on Android, but it's really useful, especially when you can pull up different menus and shortcuts, like in the Notification Center, for instance. And speaking of the Notification Center, it's also awesome to be able to drop in custom icons so you're not just stuck with flashlight and calculator or whatever. Now you can put different and more useful things in there, which is pretty awesome. I mean, the list just goes on, like being able to take a screenshot and then quickly mark it up and share it, or the ability to just record your screen and share that with somebody. Those are really awesome features. I could probably go on and on and on about all this different minutia that kind of makes iOS 11 better than iOS 10, but I think that the big difference, actually, if I could just summarize it, would be wasting less time. Everything's more convenient here, and that makes a big difference in terms of actual productivity and workflow, because when you shave off 
a few steps or seconds here and there, it adds up to a big gain. Everything just feels more fluid and like it makes sense. In fact, while it looks similar on the surface, iOS 11 is actually pretty disorienting the first time that you use it. And that's because there's so many big changes. Now, like I said before, and I actually made a whole video talking about this, the iPad Pro becomes a lot more pro when it's using the right keyboard. Apple's Magic Keyboard is okay, it types fine, but the big deal for me is that it only has one viewing angle. And actually in the future, I'm hoping that Apple comes out with a new keyboard that has multiple viewing angles that you can adjust because I think that's one thing that people who are switching or considering switching from a laptop would really like. So for the first time in years, iOS 11 has me actually excited about the iPad. Like actually really truly excited. It's to the point where if I didn't produce videos for a living, then I would seriously consider switching over. I will say this, if the iPad ever goes fully bezel-less, I'll probably wet my pants because I hate seeing that bezel around there. It just seems like half-baked, not quite done. It annoys me. So I can talk about iOS 11 all day. There's a lot of cool features on the iPhone and the iPad, uh, but I'm gonna cut this video off right here. If you guys wanna see more iOS 11 content, just let me know down in the comments. And also let me know what you guys think. I'm interested to know, MacBook Pro or iPad Pro with iOS 11 in the picture. So, all right guys, don't forget to follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K. -K. Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat is usually where I'm at. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.